Hi, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply two functions together or find the product of two functions. So if it says f times g of x, and you do need to make sure that this is a filled in dot, um, an open circle for this means composite functions, which is different, and I'll address that at another time. Um, so make sure that it does say f times g of x, it's a filled in dot. Um, all you have to do is multiply the two equations together. So you would just find the product. Um, this can be extensive if you're multi like a, multiplying a trinomial times a binomial, um, but you would just distribute everything from the first into the everything of the second. The domain of this one um, is the intersection of the domain of f and the domain of g, so your, the domain of your answer or the product has to be the domain of everything that is in f of x and everything that is in g of x. Remember the domain is just what values of x can I plug in to get an output. So let's look at a couple of examples. Our first example that we're going to find is f times g of x, where f of x is 3x minus 2, and g of x is 2x minus 1. So we would just take our first equation, which is 3x minus 2, and replace it in for f of x. And then we would take our g of x equation, which is 2x minus 1, and we would just take and FOIL our solution here. So I would just take and distribute everything from here into here. So I would do 3x times 2x, which is 6x squared. 3x times negative 1, which gives me negative 3x. And then I would distribute the second value in, so I would take negative 2 times 2x, which would give me negative 4x. Okay, and I would take negative 2 times negative 1, which gives me positive 2. Our final answer would just be to combine the two values, so f times g of x is going to equal 6x squared minus 7x plus 2. As far as the domain goes, remember that the domain is the domain of the answer, or I mean, sorry, the domain of the original functions, so the domain of f and the domain of g. Since both of these are linear equations, our domain is just going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no restrictions for lines. I can pick any value of x, plug it in, because it goes on and on forever in all directions. Okay, um, so with this, depending upon whether you are using set notation, if you're using set notation, you would just say all real numbers. You could also abbreviate that all real numbers in set notation is abbreviated as R with an extra line in it. This symbol right here represents all real numbers. And if you are using interval notation, you can use negative infinity to positive infinity. So any one of those is an acceptable way of writing the domain. It really just depends on the level of the course that you are in. For the next one, this one is going to have a little bit different of a domain because we do have more restrictions on our equations since I have a rational function times a radical function. So as far as doing the multiplication goes, it's still the same thing. I would just do f times g of x, which equals my f of x equation times my g of x equation. So we would just take and plug in, so our f of x equation is 1 over x minus 3. And then we would take and multiply that by our g of x equation. So I would multiply that by 2 square root of x. Okay, so my final product on this one would just be f of x equals 2 radical x over x minus 3 because all I did was I took this 1 times the 2. Um, remember, you multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So for this one, remember that we are looking at the intersection of both of our domains. So if I look at my original f of x equation, remember that x cannot equal 3 because of the fact that if I plug in 3, that would give me 0 in the denominator, and it's undefined with 0 in the denominator. The domain for this one would be the whatever's in the radicate, 
the, sorry, the radicand, which is the part in the radical, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Because if this is negative, that means that if I plug in that value, I would get an imaginary number, and we are only looking for the real solutions, the real outputs. So x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So to write this, if you're using set notations, you would just use x such that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, and x cannot equal 3. So those would be my two restrictions. So this would be set notation. And for interval notation, remember with interval notation, we always start from um, left to right. So our lowest le x value to the left is that um, x can be 0. So we would start with 0, and then we have to exclude 3. So we would say 0, remember the bracket means it includes it, the parenthesis means it, it does not include it. So everything from 0 to 3 would be included, um, or it can be everything from 3 to infinity. Remember, by using the parentheses, that means that it doesn't actually include that value, but it's everything up next to it. So this would be everything from like 0 up to 2.99999. And this would be everything from like 3.00001 all the way up to infinity. So everything really close to 3 all the way to infinity. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.